Hello, welcome back to Cooking with Smart. Ah, today we're going to be making our famous macaroni cheese. Another simple dish, but another one which a lot of my fans really enjoy. So I thought I'd show you my little way of doing it, which is basically the same way most people would do it, with a little quirk here and there. I'm going to be using about 100 grams of butter. This is going to serve for four to six people. So I have 100 grams of butter. Um, we've got the same 100 grams of plain flour, white cheese, orange cheese, and parmesan. And we're going to be finishing off with a bit of some mustard, some white pepper, some salt, and some cream. So first of all, we're going to melt the butter in a large pan. Now we want a pan with a, a nice thick, heavy bottom so it won't burn the sauce. I'm going to be melting the butter on a really low heat. Because if you do it any higher, it'll uh, brown the butter, which means your sauce will be darker. So if you do it really slowly, the sauce will stay white. So uh, at the start here, I uh, pan a boil of water and boil my pasta. So that's basically doing that at the same time. So I'm going to be stirring that on and off. I'm using penny pasta today, so it's penny. Penny cheese, but we call it macaroni cheese. So the butter is melting away nicely there. Now I'll take a couple of minutes. There we go. Mm. Oh, also I'm going to be using some breadcrumbs and some tomatoes for baking in the oven later. So I'll write down the recipe. At the, you can read it at the end of the video. Mm. So this butter's taking about a minute. So I'm going to use slightly less flour than butter. Just just so I'm, I'm sure it's not quite a flowery taste, but you may be able to see the kind of the roux that I'm making. And a roux is just melted butter and flour. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to guess about 100 grams because I know the consistency I want. So, as I said, just a little bit less than the butter you use. So just mixing that flour in. You don't have to sieve it or anything because the cooking, the cooking will take the lumps out of it itself. Now you can see it's still a little bit runny, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. I just want it to be sort of just firming up. There, that's the consistency I want for my roux. And that's R-O-U-X, it's named after a French chef. And it's basically a basis for lots of sauces. White sauce, and then from that you can have parsley sauce, or like today we're doing cheese sauce. You know? Mm -hmm. So obviously the next taste of this is going to be milk, which you've spotted as my missing ingredient. So I like to use whole milk, which is for better flavour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a pan, on a low heat right next to the roux. So the milk's already quite warm and I'm adding it into the roux which will make it combine a lot quicker. Mm. But first I want to cook my roux for about three or four minutes. You know, and I want to keep stirring that all the time. And I'll smell the pan because that tells me when the flour is actually cooked through. So right now it smells quite flowery, but as it cooks on, I'll just start the, I'll take on the butter and it'll smell more of butter. So I'll just stir that up for another couple of minutes. Okay, that's the flour we melted in, cooking away with the butter. Smell the pan again, and um, so we have a lovely little nice cooked roux there. So what I'm going to do with that is just slowly add the milk. So I'm just going to... A little bit at a time. So if you see, I'll start mixing that milk in straight away. And because it's warm, it should combine into a sauce. And this is how you get no lumps in your sauce. You keep on stirring it until all the flour is blended in with the, roux, uh, the milk. Sorry, all the roux in. So if you see that's getting quite thick now. And you see it's a little bit lumpy. If I keep stirring, it'll go completely smooth. So I stir it every time. 
till it's smooth and then I just add a little bit more milk. You can add all the milk at once and then give it a good stir later on, but I just like to go a little bit at a time. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to make my breadcrumbs. And what I'm going to do that is I've got some kind of bread that's been sitting about for a couple of days, it's better if it's a little bit stale. I'm just going to put it straight into the blender, as so. So I like homemade breadcrumbs the best, they crisp up really nice. I'm going to put them in a bowl there. This is for melting in the oven later on. Look at that. So they'll come up really nice and crispy. So that's that. It takes two seconds, you know, it's just for the leftover bread, the leftover crusts. You better keep keep for breadcrumbs rather than buying some out of the shop, you know. Homemade's always better. So if you see that getting really smooth, you know, the more you stir it, the smoother it gets. It's almost going into cream. So that gives you an idea of how thick your sauce is going to be. And you've always got to keep in mind that you're going to be adding cheese as well, which is going to make the final sauce even thicker, so you want to have it more runny than you think. And also I'll be going to put it into the oven with the pasta to melt the breadcrumbs, so that's going to lose a bit of moisture also. So you always have it quite a bit runnier than you think it's going to be. And that's my pasta cooked there. I'm just put a little bit of water in the pan there with the sauce because that, it's an old Italian wife's trick. If you use a lot of the pasta water, it'll thicken up any sauce, you know, if your sauce is too thin. So I'm just going to throw a bit of olive oil around the pasta, just to stop it from sticking just now, until I use it later on. So that, and uh, I'll even just use the same spoon to stir that up a bit there, you know what I mean? So. That's the pasta done, I could forget about that. And then this sauce. So I'm just going to keep adding the milk to this until I've used it all. And that's going to be about a litre of milk all in all. Okay, that's we put all the milk in the sauce and it's all blended in. So as you see, as I was saying before, I've got it quite nice and runny. Because now I'm going to season it a bit. So I'm going to put in a bit of salt, not too much, some white pepper. Now again, I'm using white pepper because you won't see it in the sauce, you know, it just gives it a bit of flavour, but it disappears into it. And a good bit of flavour, I'm using Dijon mustard today. You could also use English mustard. English mustard is really good because it gives it a good bit of colour. But Dijon is quite nice. And this is just really to give it a little bit of a, a, bit of a tang. You won't really notice it, it's just giving it underlying flavour. Mmm! And now also, I'm going to add my white cheese, so I've used about 100 grams of that, and I'm going to add about 100 grams, it's a good handful of orange cheese. I'm going to keep some cheese back later on for sprinkling on the top. So I'm just going to melt all that in to the sauce. One last thing I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of fresh nutmeg here, and I think this is an old wife's type of recipe for cheese sauce. I'm just going to grate a little bit of fresh nutmeg. Mmm, that's lovely. You've got to give it a little, a little bit of sweetness there, you know? Old tip of rustic country flavour. Okay, that's just all going to melt it together. And I've got the heat nearly off that now, so I'm just going to wait until the cheese is melted in. Okay, so that's all the cheese melted into the sauce. What I'm going to do now, just add a little bit of cream that I have. Uh, oh, I forgot, I'm going to put a little bit of parmesan. This is already grated. We could use fresh grates, it's just as good. So I'm just going to give that a wee taste, see if it's got enough salt and pepper. Perfect, I just need anything. So now, I'm going to transfer this to my pa pasta. I'm just going to put it straight in. This is an oven proof dish, a bit of perspex. So over my oiled pasta, which I've cooked earlier. You could cook this any time previously, you know, you don't have to do it at the same time. I'm just going to pour all my sauce right over. <laughs> So make sure we get all that out, we're going to scrape the pan, there we go, that should just set all that much to itself, look at that, perfect amount. So that'll just spread itself around, and onto the top of that I'm going to do another sprinkling of cheese, just 
just kind of roughly over the top there. After the cheese, I'm going to put some breadcrumbs. Now this is going to make a nice crispy on the top, you know. So we don't want to totally cover it because you still want to see a bit of the cheese. We'll just give it a really nice texture. Look at that, it's looking good already. You can see the cheese coming through there. A little bit more, and we get right in down the edges. And if we slice some tomatoes, I'm just going to randomly throw them about the top. There we go. The nail just all melting nice, and it goes in the oven. There we go. Okay, now that's that ready for the oven. I can leave that for cooking later on, or I could just go straight in the oven with it. And that's what I wanted to take 15 to 20 minutes and in the middle of a high oven. Okay, now that's the macaroni cheese already, I think. It's been in the oven for about 20 minutes on a high heat. Let's take out and see what it looks like. Wow, that looks fantastic. Nice and crispy breadcrumbs, melted tomato and cheese. Wonderful. Mm. 